Good morning and welcome to our webinar this morning, setting up and using Name Me Video Consulting, your questions asked, answered, sorry, uh, brought to you by the Name Me Network and also with Citizens Advice Bureau and Citizens Advice Scotland. So delighted to have you here this morning. We've got a really interesting webinar lined up for you today. Um, my name is Mark Bezik, I'm the National Lead for the Near Me Network and I've got my colleagues Rosie Cooper and Ken Monaghan with me uh, this morning as well and we'll uh, introduce them formally a bit later on. So I'm going to just go through a bit of housekeeping with you this morning. So basically you're all attending on mute this morning and um, there's a Q&A section so you should see two speech bubbles with a question mark on your toolbar within your Teams live event. That's for, for you to ask questions, to make comments, to if, if people are speaking about things in the questions that you might have an answer to, please, please come up with that as well. Um, there are also some accessibility options for you uh, within your Teams meeting. So if you find the three little dots next to your toolbar on the screen, you can then look at things like having closed captions operating uh, for you and also you can uh, pin the speakers well if you need to see their faces more clearly. You can also pause the um, event as well if you need to and also uh, change the speed of the playback. If for some reason you can't hear us or see us, please leave the session and rejoin. Sometimes that enables your sound and vision to um, reconnect. You can join by audio only and there's instructions for that within your attendee link. Uh, if you need, can get near good Wi-Fi or use an Ethernet cable to connect your device directly to the network, that might also help. So hopefully you will all be able to see us and hear us this morning. So um, as I said, I'm joined by my colleagues Ken Monnan, who's the project manager for NIMI Network, and also Rosie Cooper, who's the National Quality Improvement Lead. And they've been working alongside Citizens Advice Bureaus and Citizens Advice Scotland in order to look at how near me can be utilised for video consultations. We're delighted that we've got Karen, Kyle, Anne Taylor and Evan Anderson, who have all been involved in the early projects here, and they're going to be speaking about their experiences a little bit later on. And we're also supported by Mark Glass today, who's from the National VT, VC team uh, uh, behind the scenes production for this, this morning's webinar. So, we're going to be looking at what we'd like to, to for people to leave with today is, is an understanding of how easy uh, video calls could be for you to use with people seeking help from your service and, and for you as a bureau staff to feel able to implement near me. Um, and we are available you know, after this webinar to support you with that and we'll explore that a little bit more later on. So that so the, the people that are going to be presenting this morning, uh, Karen, Anne and Evelyn, they're going to talk about the planning and testing they went through the challenges and how they were overcome and, and the successes uh, of, of, of the impact that near me has made uh, in their work. We're going to hear from some advisors and some clients as well, which are quite excited about. And then we've got uh, some opportunity to speak about future opportunities and, and a Q&A session. So you have a, a, an opportunity. Um, Ken and Rose, you're going to be pitching questions to the panel. And we've also got other members of the Citizens Advice Scotland team joining us as well this morning and um, we'll introduce those later on and then I'll do a quick summary at the end uh, as to um, where we're going to next. So without further ado I'm going to now hand over to Karen Kyle who is going to kick our session off this morning. So uh, over to you Karen, thank you. Thank you so much Mark um, and thank you again everyone for joining us um, on this webinar today. We do hope that you will find it useful and um, if we could have the next slide mark um, just a quick introduction about the cab network team that will be presenting today and um, there's myself i'm karen kyle from parkhead cab um, and we've also got ann taylor um, who's from Falkirk CAB and Evelyn Anderson from Airdrie Citizens Advice Bureau. Um, so how did we get here? <laughs> um, at CABs we, we're, we're very used to having to adapt um, and always having to, to look at how we can change to, to meet the demands of service delivery. Um, but I think over the past year, <laughs> due, due to the pandemic, that 
um, need to review what we're doing has been accelerated um, over the past year. And we have had to come to grips very quickly with the, the online platforms that are available. Um, most commonly Zoom or Teams and also near me. Um, it's been a tough year for everyone. Um, but as usual, we have embraced that change um, and that's where we find ourselves at the moment. As we became more and more um, familiar with online platforms for communication um, and communicating with each other, not only through service delivery, but also through our teams and the office and in, in daily life. What, what we quickly recognised that although some service users um, are, are quite happy to use some of the online platforms, um, there, there are still some clients where face-to-face um, -face contact is really crucial. Um, to be able to, to see their advisor and be able to work through things like forms, etc. The, the Near Me tool, which we're going to focus on today, um, is a tool that allows that that face to face contact between service providers um, and, and service users. It is easy to use and it is secure and requires no special software or downloads to, to be downloaded by the service user, which can often be a barrier um, for some of those accessing CAB services. Um, it can be used in a, a variety of devices, such as a smartphone, tablet or PC. Um, the user can, simply needs to click on a web link um, that will take them to a virtual waiting area. Um, so unlike Zoom and Teams, there, there is very much that office, a virtual office environment where they're actually going into a waiting area, which I think is very useful. Um, and the support, um, the support from the, the Near Me team has been really good for that, for getting set up. But Anne and Evelyn will talk a bit more about that later. So um, around autumn 2019, um, CAS were approached by the Scottish Government with an offer um, to bureaus to be able to utilise the, the Near Me video appointment system. Um, access to that system is actually being paid for by the Scottish Government till at least March 2022. Um, the, the Near Me platform has been used um, within public services across Scotland for you know, a considerable amount of time um, and that's been rolled out within um, the other social care and public services across Scotland. Uh, we were asked um, if we want to participate in the Near Me pilot um, along with all other bureaus across Scotland. And from that, uh, the NHS and CAS undertook the pilot project with 11 bureaus. Um, those 11 bureaus that are listed here, Airdrie, Coatbridge, Falkirk, Highland, McMahon, um, Loch Arbor, Motherwell and Wishaw, Nairn, um, ourselves, Rocks Roxburgh and Berwickshire, and Shetland and West Lothian um, met on a weekly basis to plan um, and implement the, the Near Me within our own individual bureaus and recorded that learning as we were going along. So um, the shared experiences and the learning from the pilot um, focused around these areas. So it was the whole planning and actual testing of the Near Me platform and an advice services delivery setting. I am also looking at what challenges and barriers that, that we faced either as a, an organisation in terms of governance, but also um, 
advisors and service users. We also recorded the successes along the way, of which there were many, which is great, um, and also managed to capture some advisor and client experiences. Um, so for us, I was really looking at the, the next the next step of that and what the future opportunities of near me might be. Um, and that's, you know, where we need everyone's input into that. So we're now going to pass over to Anne, who's going to share with you some of the, the learning and experiences that we had through the pilot. Hi, good morning. I'm going to start with the, the planning, uh, things to consider when you're doing this in your own bureau. We have guidance already up on the CAS website about how to give GDPR compliant video advice. So what you'd be looking at is to how you can adapt this and work this into your existing policies and procedures. One of the main things to think about when you're doing video ad advice is ensure your working environment suitable you'd be looking at, is there any personal information available in the background? Is there background noise? All that sort of thing. There's going to be an option to blur your background. We didn't have this to start with, but that is coming in. So that will make the, the background issue less important. The other thing is to check your software and app permissions. Most bureau, you'll need to go through the CAS IT system for this. We actually found that most of ours worked without any problems and we didn't, we didn't need that. Um, next thing, look at this technical setup guide. This is we've put a quick, quick, quick setup guide together. Um, the group, the group that was working did this, uh, and again, this is available on the CAS website for you. Training. It's worth doing a little bit of training before you use the use the platform. Um, there are training availables available on the video conferencing website. There's YouTube videos. The videos are really clear and simple. They're quite easy to understand. And there are also short training courses available um, periodically. Uh, from personal experience, I would say that you don't need a lot of training to do this. Uh, the system's quite simple. Uh, I did a 20 minute training course myself and felt Ill, able to train colleagues afterwards. That's how easy it is. So testing, uh, once you've got your waiting area set up, you can practice as much as you like. Um, you can send messages to each other, send emails, uh, texts to your colleagues, and that means you can try the system from both sides. Helps you to see what the client would see so that when, once you're using it properly, that you can, you can explain things better, tell them what to do. You can practice inviting people into a call or add in another participant from the waiting area, and you can have a try at screen sharing or moving your client from one area to another if you have more than one waiting area set up. Uh, next slide, Matt. Okay, this is a process map. This is also available in our guide uh, on the CAS website. Uh, you can adopt this in your bureau or just change it a bit to meet your own needs. And it helps you decide whether a near me call is appropriate for your client. So you'd be looking at considering, are they going to manage by telephone or email? And if not, me and me might be more suitable for them. Does the client have a laptop, smartphone or tablet? And if they have, obviously me and me is an option for them. The process map also details the operating systems and browser requirements. And sometimes you'll find that the client doesn't really know what their setup is. So if not, it's just easier to do a test call with them. Yeah, next slide, Matt. OK, challenges. To be honest, there actually haven't been too many. Um, one bureau had a problem getting their waiting room set up. Uh, they found that a quick call to the VC IT team uh, got this sorted out. I've had to contact them a couple of times myself. Um, found them really helpful. You're getting your issues sorted out a half an hour or so. Uh, so yeah, it's been really good. The one issue everybody is finding is that near me doesn't work through your cab uh, remote access. Uh, probably the same as if you're trying to do a Teams or a Zoom meeting, it doesn't recognise your camera, etc. So you just have to come out of the remote and enter through your browser. There's also been some connection issues and obviously this isn't 
unique to you, the near me. This is everybody working from home, etc. Um, so we always have an if you're using it, just always have an arrangement in place that you should call the client if you or they can't get through and say so it's not too much of a problem, really. I'm going to now pass over to Evelyn to talk about the successes. Good morning. Um, the real thing, uh, there's quite a lot of successes. There's more successes than anything else. Because at CAB, we're just so good at adapting to whatever we've we come up against. And during COVID, it's been particularly difficult. So the main success, I think, for a lot of advisors was feeling that they were able to give that face to face delivery to or to their clients that really needed it. Um, and because the system was so easy to use, it was so easy for us to cascade it down to staff and volunteers. Um, the ease um, you can talk through easily. You can talk through over the phone. Um, I've talked over with some volunteers just over the phone and just took them through the steps without them even seeing it. They just sent them the links. We found it really good, the fact that we, we played around as advisor and client, so we switched roles so that the advisors could see how easy it was for their clients and then they were able to talk their clients through. So it just, and because everything is GDPR compliant, it gives an old uh, extra layer of security and the reassurance to both the staff and volunteers and to the clients that everything is totally compliant and it also complies with other organisations' GDPR. Thanks, Mark. So the main thing we wanted to do was to manage expectation because this, this service is going to be so unique to each bureau. You can actually just mould mold near me to suit what you want to deliver. So if you're looking at um, training or you're looking at waiting rooms, a few, a few of the bureaus that piloted it decided to take two waiting rooms so that we could set them up separately. So we could allow clients um, to come in who had preset appointments to come into a different system so they weren't getting coming through the drop in waiting room. So one for appointments, one for drop in. So we've got the and we also have the facility to move clients from waiting rooms to take them back into the waiting room, bring them back into the meeting. So that was something that's really that's really good and it's kind of unique. So having these two waiting areas um, it just allows a lot more flexibility. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a wee look at some of the advisor experiences in a, in a short video. Thanks, Mark. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is um, just, I, apparently the sound isn't working on that video, so I'm going to just try and change a different setting and we'll just see if I can alter that. So bear with me a minute while we just work out this. As ever, it worked in rehearsal. <laughs>
Okay, apologies for that, folks. We, we don't seem to have been able to get the sound to work on that video clip, even though it worked earlier on. So um, the, the whole of this session is recorded, so you will be able to see that on the recording. Uh, that's a real shame because it's a really powerful message from uh, the person that's speaking there. So um, we'll try the next slide and just see whether that works or not. But um, bear with us. Thank you. Would you like to carry on, Evelyn, and then we'll just see how we get on. Yeah, we've just got a couple of slides, Mark. Um, and we're just we're talking about like the future opportunities, you know, um, for the ability. Is that one going to work? That's one of our that's one of our advisors who that's one of our advisors who was just letting us know how easy he found it as he had used it in different kind of platforms himself. So um he was used it as a um as a patient for the NHS and he'd also used it as um an advisor. And he found it really easy to use with, with some clients and found that you got the real, you know, you were able to see with a client, you were able to, to see body language. And um, so that was quite, quite good. And you can move that on, Mark. So we just had client experience and you, you can see there's a, you know, a couple of statements from, from um, clients. You know, it's easy to use, it's really good, you know, it's so user friendly. They just have to put in a couple of little, um, you know, a little bit of information. So when they come into the waiting room, that we can uh, clearly identify them. Right, smart. And so we're looking at the future opportunities. So it's so unique that we're able to adapt and develop a bespoke service for our, bu for our bureau. So everybody's bureau can deliver it a, a different way. They could, there's no pressure, um, there's no uniformity on it. So it's whatever suits you. Um, there are no right or wrong options. So we can use it to deliver part or all of the bureau services, allowing the clients who may not be able to access the service out with their normal working hours. So we've got people who maybe are working who wouldn't traditionally be able to use it. We've got people who have in need home visits and if they have the, you know, the ability to use the to use near me, then it saves time as well because we could be doing maybe a few home visits in a day rather than travelling around. As we know just now, that's an option that's not really available for our clients, unfortunately. So we also it's going to be great because of the GDPR that we can bring um, the local authorities, we can bring NHS, we can bring it a lot of people in our virtual waiting room and uh, in, in review room and it's going to alleviate some of the pressure about staff getting around, people collating diaries due to travelling and distance. Um, we found it really um, positive and we're going to keep using it for both a training tool because um, you can have um, trainee advisors in your waiting room as well in your interview room if your client's fine with that and we're going to also um, you know, be using it just for, for in-house in training. So um, I hope that's if you enjoyed the webinar. Sorry about the videos not working, um, but you'll be able to access them later. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Evelyn. Um, that, that was excellent again for, for Anne and uh, for Karen for just going through it so clearly and logically uh, and a really honest accounts of the things that were that were a struggle, but also what, what worked well. So that's been an excellent account of how you've been getting on. Uh, and again, to hear real life stories from advisors and clients for the benefits of, of being able to, to offer them a video call. So that's excellent. So um, what I'm going to do now is is hand over to uh, Ken and Rosie and, and hopefully there's been some chat and some questions on the Q&A. Um, so yes, please use that. Speak about some of the things that, that you've experienced in your near me journey, if, if it's something you've been using and what kind of things do, do we need to kind of um, speak about or ask questions around to help us as go to the next stage in terms of offering this to, to folks. So um, I'll hand over to Rosie and Ken and just uh, we'll see where we're at. Thank you. OK, thanks for that, Mark, and, and thanks to the presenters. Um, there's been a flurry of questions, um, most of which we've managed to get get answered. Um, one that was asked um, was, um, how do you encourage uptake? Um, we've been offering clients video appointments by Zoom, but there hasn't been any uptake and clients are choosing the phone. Was there anything different you used to encourage the users? Should we pose that question to Karen, perhaps? Hello, thanks, Rosie. Yeah, um, when we were introducing the, the Near Me as an option, we, we wanted to do that in a kind of planned and managed way. So initially, when we went through our planning process and, and we reviewed our, our processes for our clients accessing the service, we decided to introduce it as almost part of the triage process. So for, for those clients um, who were having difficulty with the telephone or were having difficulty contacting us by email, then we, we could offer the option of the near me appointment and we we would um as part of that triaging process we would send them the actual link and the details for that um we have not chosen parkhead bureau have not chosen at this point to put it onto our, to our website um but that is an option for the future that we could consider in terms of dropping because it is possible um to, to access the Near Me um, platform and use it as a drop-in service, which I think we're, we're all missing at the moment. I'm um, so very excited about that. And, you know, that's an option for take up in the future for those clients that, that want to access in that way. So at the, at the moment, it's been pretty much us um, highlighting that option um, as a service delivery option to clients coming through um, and accessing via telephone initially. Um, so the staff offering that as a, a delivery option. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen, I'm just wondering, it also ties in quite nicely with a question about um, setting opening times of the waiting area, because this is what you people who are planning to go ahead and have a drop in clinic, you can set that. So Ken, would you, would you could you maybe expand on how, how that would be done? You're on mute, Ken. Yeah, I would re re realised that. Um, yes, as a, a waiting area admin, um, you've got various configuration options, uh, one of which is changing the opening hours. So you can have multiple waiting areas. Each waiting area can have its own independent opening hours um, and you can change them on the fly. You, you can go in there and just change them. You can decide that this week you're going to shut at 12 or open till 5 or whatever. It's, it's entirely um, under your control. Um, but just picking up on the, the waiting areas, there's, there's the, the, sorry, the drop in and the appointment. There were two or three questions around and about sort of drop in versus appointment. How do they work? Um, what's the difference? How do you manage them? So I and I think Falkirk have got both a drop in and an appointment based uh, waiting area. So I don't know if you can comment or give some advice on how you found it. To, to be honest, Ken, we, we've got it set up. We're not using the drop in uh, at the moment. Uh, just I think that there's just been so much else going on that uh, with you know changes to everybody's working habits and you know 
to, to, to get that working uh, is a bit too early for us. But what, we'd, what we had thought initially was that if we were using it for both and there was one waiting area that one that maybe somebody would be would take a client that was supposed to be for an appointment it would cause lots of confusion so we thought it was easier if we set two waiting areas you send them the link to either the appointment or the drop-in is on the website uh, and it means you can set separate opening hours because just now well when, when we were open open door we would have a, a set opening times but we might have seen appointments out with those times because it was easier to get a room etc so we would probably be doing the same uh, when when this is up and running properly what we were um, the, the good thing about having the, the separate waiting areas let's say you can have separate hours but there's also an option to have a text sent to say the session supervisor in the office alerting them that somebody's waiting so it means you're not actually having to sit and watch the thing physically all the all the time so uh, i hope that answers the question about how it works i know thank <laughs> you and I, I was going to pick up on that notification because obviously well obviously the assumption is that if you're expecting somebody at half past 11 you're going to be sitting in the waiting area at 29 minutes past 11 waiting to pick that person out of the queue but if it's drop in it's drop by its very nature. You don't know when folk are going to going to be there. Um, so uh, as Anne said, you can go in there, configure a, a mobile number in the, the system, um, and you can define how long the, the, the client has to wait before a notification is triggered. Um, so you can have one minute, two minutes, five minutes, whatever. Um, but then the system will automatically send a text to that person saying somebody's in this waiting area. Um, Pick them up. It doesn't have to be used for drop in. You can use it in a, an appointment based waiting area as well. But Personally, I can see more of a use case for a drop in as opposed to to um, an appointment based one. Um, in terms of other questions, um, training guidance is on the website uh, and I've popped a link in the, the chat. The CAS guidance, I think it's in the slides, the URL, it's on the CAS website as well. And we've got guidance, a guidance document um, that's hot off the press. It's literally just about to be sent across to uh, CAS comms today um, to get the CAS logos and make, make it CASified, cabified, because um, it's based on the NHS template, which will then be available to all cabs that's, that's the that's still learning from the 11 pilot sites that we had um, on, the, on the weekly call. So that'll be made available as well. Um, there was uh, again about the waiting areas, um, about dropping clients. Um, you can send the link to the client because each waiting area has a unique link and that link doesn't change. So you can send the, the client a link to that waiting area and say, clicking it at half past 10 or 11 o'clock or, or what have you. Um, but with the drop in ones, it's more likely that you would have it either posted on your website or possibly in your email signature saying, you know, we offer a drop in session Monday to Friday, 9 to, you know, 9 to 5 or 9 to 12, click here. Um, and then folk have got it in an email. But again, how you distribute that is kind of is up to your, yourself. Thank you very much, Ken. I just wondered if Kirsty, you want to come in and just add any more about the 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 um the work you've been doing at, at um enabling that link to go onto folks' websites. Yes, um there were a couple of different options for the waiting areas. Um so in the, the guidance which will be available shortly, there's a, a link where you can download um a button directly to your, your website. Um and there's also an option that CAS IT have been looking into, um, where it'll be more modified in line with the, the CAB template websites. Um, so at the moment we're, we're waiting until a few CAB have maybe tested um, the different options before we decide um, which one is the best one to go ahead with and any differences between the two. Thank you very much, Kirsty. Excellent. Okay. Um, um, sorry, I was going to say, I see Mark's published a, a link to a, a short survey, uh, if you can, if you don't mind completing that. Um, and there's been some more questions come in, so rather than try and answer them by text, uh, but, you know, responding to the question. How many people can be in one interview stroke session? It's designed as a one to one, one to two system. You can have one to four, one to five typically works. Um, there is a group consultation tool aspect of uh, near me being worked on. Current ETA for that is late summer. So at the moment, one, one to three, one to four is kind of pushing the 
the limits in terms of the the call quality. Um, so that answers hopefully answers that one. Uh, ah, Mark's apologised. He sent he sent that announcement too early. Um, does it integrate with any other systems for ease of recording appointments? No, it doesn't. It's a totally standalone system. Uh, can you add in another waiting area on your own? No, you would need to uh, fill in the online form to come to us as uh, as the, the managers of the system, and we'll create an additional waiting area. Uh, is it okay to run appointments concurrently, say with more than one advisor? Yes, you can have multiple advisors. We, we tell them service providers. You can have multiple advisors per waiting area, so it's not one waiting area per provider. You can have multiple people in a waiting area. And then two questions that I think are potentially for the, the panel. Uh, has this been trialled for outreach venues at all? Wondering if this might help to get these services reinstated. The understand it depends on the venues. Um, and what kind of clients have participants found they're able to reach using a system that they would otherwise would not be able to help or find harder to help via phone, email, etc. Just before we'll, we'll add that out to the, the panel, I can actually answer a little bit in terms of housing association um, that uh, one of the housing associations have reached an arrangement with I think she said the village was Cairn Do, but it's the other side of the rest and be thankful. Um, they've got an arrangement with the village hall that they've got a room in the village hall that they've set up with, with Kit so that clients can go in there and communicate, not just with the housing association, but they can book the, the, the PC out and communicate um, with NHS, with the housing association if they don't have the technology themselves. Um, and in terms of clients who wouldn't be able to reach, again, one of the housing associations, it was actually a client that uh, that didn't have a phone, didn't have a landline, didn't have a mobile phone. All they had was a PC. So being able to do an, uh, a near me video call was really the short of email was was the only option to communicate with that that client. So on that, um, I suppose uh, Karen and Evelyn. Um, can you comment on trialling it for outreach venues first of all? Um, yeah, I think that that is a, a possibility for possibly reinstating the outreach services that, that we've not been able to do on a face-to-face -face basis. Um, certainly, I, I don't see that being prevented through the Near Me system at all. Um, we would just need to work with the, the service provider um, who the, the stakeholder is to see that that, that would be doable. Um, but especially certainly now, yeah. <clears throat> especially now as well, Kat, that um, we're starting to see us opening up. So our yeah. libraries and things will be starting to open up. So there'll be more the service will be more accessible. You know, they could be able to go in to like local community centres who sometimes give them private rooms and and you see a PC, you know, or a laptop, um, and we'll be able to use it that way. So it's something that we're looking to be developing, but again, that is going to be up to the individual bureau, bureau the area that yeah. you live in, the services, accessibility that you've got. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, and then uh, the other question, um, oh, Mark's saying we're doing a webinar in June about community hubs in remote rural locations like the one in ah, it's Karen Dow, that's why I couldn't find it on a map. Um, what kind of clients have participants found they're able to reach using this system that they would otherwise not have been able to help or found harder to help via phone or email? Um, Karen, I don't know if you want to bring in uh, Mandy's experience with that um, lady yeah. way back at the, yeah. at the start. Um, it was a real shame that you weren't able to, to see the videos, but I would encourage you to do that um, if you access it through through the, the website after the webinar. Um, but the, the one of the first near me appointments that our advisor, one of our advisors, Mandy did, um, was a, a long-term client of, of Parkhead CAB and although they had been able to keep in touch by telephone um, because of their partic particular vulnerabilities and mental health issues, they really struggled with it. So uh, when they were able to um, have the opportunity to, to have the Near Me appointment, it was actually quite emotional 
<laughs> you know, for for the for the client and the advisor, um, who had already had a pre-established relationship, um, through advice delivery, to be able to see each other again, um, was really quite quite a, a an emotional experience. So, you know, for for those clients that that do that are vulnerable, um, which we we all have clients that are vulnerable, then the near me can can really help to have that face to face contact. Also for, you know, form filling for PIP applications, it's actually much better to be able to see somebody when you're going through that form. You can also share the form with the individual. Um, so I, I think that was quite a powerful experience, the experience that Mandy had. So have a look when you can. Thank you very much, Karen. That, that's really helpful. Um, there's also another, or, um, Anne or Evelyn, do you want to add anything to that? I think uh, <clears throat> that the cl clients that you do home visits, you know, I kind of touched on that, but the clients who can access at all, you know, it opens up rather than just getting someone on the end of your telephone, they can actually see if somebody's face, you know, you, you can actually talk, so you can see their, their body language, you can actually see, you can read more than you would be able to get from a telephone call. And I think that's really powerful for some of your clients because, you know, getting them to engage at times can be difficult, but actually getting to see them and getting them to engage, you know, makes a big difference. Great, thank you very much, Evelyn. And um, so, the couple of questions have popped up um, with regards to one is how many people can actually be on a call at the same time, and the other one is how many people can be work. How many advisors can you have working concurrently? So I think I'm going to just pop that to Ken in the first instance. Um, well, in terms of how many people can be on a call. Um, the, the one to three, one to four, just now, unless you bring out the group calling. In terms of how many concurrent users you can have, it's in the hundreds. So I certainly don't need to worry. If you've got a team of about 10 advisors and they all want to use the system at the same time, that's not going to be uh, a challenge. Um, there was a question um, come in um, about calling in the, uh, calling in somebody else into the call, um, for example, the, the DWP. Um, I think Parkhead actually did that with um, was that an energy provider. Um, you, you can put the have somebody on the telephone and put it on speakerphone and have the client on your phone and, and work it that way. But also from within, there's, there's two ways you can send the invite to two people to say, please come to the waiting area at half past ten, and you pick them both up into the call. But also from within the call itself, you can send an, an invite out. Uh, either over SMS or over email or internal chat systems that will bring somebody directly into the call that you're on. So if you've got a DWP contact on standby for the sake of argument, um, then you can just ping them a message saying, right, here's the link to this call and it'll just bring them straight in to the call, totally bypasses the, the waiting area. Um, there was a question about um, how secure is this more secure than any other video platform? I don't know if it's more secure than any other video platform, um, but it is more secure than a lot of other video platforms. Um, we have a full, we've got a, a data, data privacy impact assessment that's freely available. Uh, we have got a data processing agreement with Attend Anywhere and their sub processors. We have a system security policy in place. It's been signed off at the highest level within NHS Scotland and Scottish Government. We don't capture, sorry, we don't store any, we call it patient identifiable or person identifiable information. We, we Technically we capture it because you know, when a client logs in, we ask them for their name so they can be identified in the waiting area. If you're SMSing a client, we need to know their number for you to SMS them, but we don't store that information. Um, you cannot record within the system. The chat there is no chat history, so it's totally self-contained. That that call that you're on, that appointment you've got, it's totally self-contained. It's not recorded. It's not stored anywhere. 
um, and we can share the system security policy with your security officer um, if you if you need. And I think Annabelle, I think I've, I sent you the SSP ages ago. One off, I know I've still sent you the DPA, but I think I sent you the SSP a while back. Um, so yes, we, it is designed from the ground up for uh, privacy. Um, there's, there's a question I've covered the DWP. Um, there's one question: um, When can CAB access this? I'm assuming by this you mean uh, near me uh, now. Um, for the last several months, um, I will uh, publish that question and put the a link to the application form uh, in as the response. Um, so basically you just go and fill the application form. Um, there's training guidance there as well. Um, and Annabelle just jumping on that. I don't know if you want to talk about training in, in a second, but fundamentally just apply for a waiting area. The guidance is going to be coming out from uh, CAS that we've worked on with the pilot sites. The training videos are there. So just just crack on and, and then Annabelle over to you for I don't know if you want to speak about training. Yeah. Um hi everyone. Um I think this is really exciting in terms of um being able to more easily do shadowing and mentoring for people going through the ATP. But if we just come back first of all to the training that you need to set this up, then all the materials are there on, on the website as Ken's just said. There's there's nothing that CAS needs to Add to that because it um, it's all there, so so that's um, really good, and I think everybody has has found it. I mean, as Anne said, after 20 minutes, she felt able to cascade it to other people in the bureau, so that was fine. Um, so going on to how else near me might be used, um, we talked earlier on about how to bring another person into the call. So you can imagine once you've got permission from a client that you can uh, bring in a trainee or maybe two trainees if the client's comfortable to the call to shadow and um, if you then go on to um, use it for mentoring where the trainee is leading the, co the uh, call but with the support of the mentor if the um, advisor needs to speak to the mentor then what can happen is the client can be put back into the waiting room momentarily while the um, the uh, mentor and the uh, trainee have have a quick chat in the same way that if you would want to leave the interview room to go and talk to a session supervisor or if you want the mentor and the trainee to go and talk privately, then you would just leave the, the client in, in the interview room briefly. So you just put them back in the in the waiting area. So I think it makes um, life a lot easier for delivering remote advisor training, either because of the pandemic and the fact that you can't get clients, um, sorry, trainees in, or um, because people are going to be perhaps working remotely and therefore you want to train them remotely, or if it's at different times uh, and it makes it easier for the trainee uh, to do it in that way. So I think I think there's lots of exciting opportunities there. Thank you very much, Annabelle. Um, I was just wondering if I could pose a question to Anne. Um, obviously, we've heard a lot about um, using the waiting areas, and, and there was obviously mention of bringing DWP in to it. Um, what was your experience of filling out forms over near me, and any advice, particularly about filling out forms and filling out forms online? It's actually really good for doing an online form because of the screen share facility. Um, one of our advisors has used it for, uh, I think it was a carer's allowance form, for example, and she could put it up on the screen. So she's sort of reading it with, you know, with the client and the client knows exactly what she's typing in. And so that you know, makes a huge difference. It made it go a whole lot quicker than, than trying to do it by telephone and, you know, having to, having to read every single every single bit out. So, yes, yeah, from that point of view, it's, it's really good. Thanks very much, Anne. And I suppose that another wee question is that building on that was um, the experience of, um, I think that it came up in conversation earlier about having bringing in like an energy provider into the conversation. I don't know, was Evelyn or Karen, do you, could you answer that? Yeah. You, can, you can easily bring somebody else in 
you know, by in, either by invite. Um, if you've got your advisor and you can bring, see like a, if you want to have a meeting with like a social worker, you know, you can actually bring them into the, into the, the meeting. So if you've got particular questions that need to be asked or you've got an advocacy worker, you know, you can bring them in. It's easily to bring them in because you send an invitation, the link, and they can come in. And as Ken said, you can, once you're in, you could contact them. But I think it would be better if it's all pre-arranged to, to do that so that it, is, it runs much more smoothly rather than trying to get a hold of, you know, somebody to to just to just to bring them in or to phone up an energy company, you know, on the off chance that, you know, you're going to get through. But you've got the client on the phone, so you, and you can you you can read your client. I don't know if that uh, answers your question. Yeah, no, it does. That's great. That's absolutely special. Um, and I suppose building on that, I suppose there's there's also the question of um, oh gosh, it's just gone out of my head completely. Well, there was a question coming about cost. I don't know if that's the one you saw. Um, any ideas of ongoing cost. It is funded by Scottish Government to the end of March 2022 um, uh, with the option to extend the contract um, for another year or so after that or to re-procure um, and a year and a half down the line who knows it might all be, be teams because you know who knows what's going to happen but at the moment there is no cost to the the public sector in Scotland for this product. Um, if it is chargeable, it's chargeable by the number of active users per month and active is somebody who's actually made a call. So you could have 20 members of staff set up, but if only three of them have made a call, you're only charged for three of those members of staff, if that makes sense. But that's a long way off. Uh, and just very quickly, because I know we're running out of time, uh, how did it work bringing in a third party when you did not plan? And will there be a cost to bureau? Well, the cost to bureau, I think we've, we've covered that um, because there isn't one. Um, how did it work bringing in a third party? I don't know uh, if uh, if Karen or Evelyn, I know you can answer that it can be done, but was it? did it work well once you did it? Yeah, yeah, bringing in um, a third party yeah. worked well, um, as well as uh, so it would do in, in a face-to-face -face interview setting. I don't think there was any difficulties with that. I think the, the other the other um, issue about bringing in third parties is interpreters. Sometimes um, interpreters are better face-to-face. -face. Um, BSL, for example, um, and they can be brought into the interview uh, through that method as you would in a, a real live face-to-face -face office setting. Mm. And, the, and the ability as well to share your screen. Yeah. Your third party as well, you know, when you've got people in the meeting, you can have, you can still share your screen, to your screen, and that's very helpful. Okay, thank you guys. Um, there's no new questions, that's 11.55, so... Mark, I don't know if it's back to you to wrap up. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Ken and Rosie, for uh, comparing the uh, the questions so well there and everyone uh, stepping up and answering them. That's been a really helpful session, I think. That, and to have the time to, to have answers people's questions has been really valuable, hopefully. Um, and again, I think just seeing the potential that's there for the citizens of, of Scotland and you as bureaus to, to offer the opportunities is massive, not just for the clients, but also for your advisors and your volunteers. So you've got lots of opportunities to 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 you know, further your staffing and provide good service. So what I'd like to do again is just to, um, if you wouldn't mind uh, filling out a little survey, just to tell us a bit more about who you are, where you work and, and your experience of NIMI, but also what we'd like to do is work out, you know, what, what do you need next from 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 the, the, the advisors or from Sins Advice or from us as a NIMI network to, to help you make that next step. Um, and, and I suppose all it really needs to me to do now is just to say thank you very much to everyone that's joined us this afternoon for Karen and Evelyn and Anne for sharing their stories and, and for, for putting that up across so clearly uh, and passionately uh, and also for, for Kirsty 
and Annabelle for for um, the, the background side of things as well. And also Ruth Gibbs been in the background as well, um, supporting us. So um, yes, and, and well done Rosie and Ken for so comparing that bit and also to Mark for uh, keeping us going in the background. And we'll make sure that those videos within embedded within the PowerPoint are, are viewable to you afterwards. And um, so again, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, it's been fabulous to have uh, a good number of folk from across Scotland uh, joining us. So I will hope to see you again at another one of our webinars. Thank you very much and goodbye.